Hey, Flimsy Lunch Tray here with you today, and we're going to be continuing on in our series uh, discussing different ships when it comes to upgrade and commander builds. So today we're going to be looking at the Tier 10 uh, French Destroyer uh, Premium, uh, the Marceau, if I pronounced that correctly. Uh, doubts that that may not have been possible. So I actually already recorded this video yesterday and was one minute away uh, just wrapping up concluding thoughts and the power went out and corrupted the whole video file, everything. So I had to wait for power to come back on to find that out. And then uh, I'm re-recording this again. So uh, it should be pretty polished in presentation, hopefully. Okay, so as is traditional, um, when we're looking at different ships, uh, when we're looking at the class of destroyers right now, one of the first things I like to do is discuss what type of destroyer are we looking at here. Um, you have three types of destroyers. You have your torpedo destroyers, you have your gunboat destroyers, and you have your hybrid destroyers, uh, being a bit uh, of both. So when we look at the Marceau, when we look at her uh, artillery, she has these 127 millimeter uh, turrets, uh, guns, where she's got four of them across the ship, uh, two guns in each turret, so um, eight with a reload time of 3.1 seconds. And then if we look at, a mistake, if we look at torpedo armaments, um, she has these 550 millimeter tubes, um, sets of three. She has uh, four in total, uh, two on starboard and two on port. So, um, and those torpedo tubes have a range or torpedoes have a range of nine kilometers and a speed of 60 knots. So realistically, we're looking more of a, at a hybrid destroyer here. However, even though uh, we say a hybrid destroyer, she's a hybrid destroyer that leans more towards a gunboat destroyer, um, just because her guns are so good. Um, and that's where you primarily want to make your investment in when it comes to the upgrade and commander build, um, in my opinion. So uh, I'm looking at the armor layouts. Uh, we can see that the fore-end plating, the side plating, uh, the aft-end plating, um, all has this 19 millimeter uh, armor thickness. And then looking at the plating uh, for the uh, side plating for the turrets, you can see it's pretty much 10 all around. And then you get to the superstructure, um, you get 13 millimeter. Now, one of the things that is notable about the armor layout um, and just armor in general on the French destroyers. Uh, my understanding is that this is essentially a Kleber hull, uh, but we have the Marceau here. Uh, but with the French destroyers, they tend to have pretty decent armor, um, where you're going to be able to find yourself out trading a enemy destroyer um, better. It just seems that the Marceau uh, Kleber take damage better, um, don't take as much as another type of destroyer would. So uh, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about um, modules, upgrades, commander skills. Uh, as being a premium ship, you come uh, equipped with all modules. So there's um, no additional uh, modules that you need to upgrade there. And then looking at uh, the upgrades. So you have six slots because we're at tier 10. And for the first slot, you have a few options. Uh, my recommendation is taking the main armaments modification one. What this does is, is that it reduces the risk of your main battery and your torpedo tubes from becoming incapacitated by negative 20%. Your main battery and torpedo tube survivability is improved by plus 50%, meaning less likely to become incapacitated uh, and knocked out. Uh, and then your main battery and torpedo tube repair time, should those two armaments should be uh, incapacitated, uh, they will repair faster um, with negative 20% there. Um, you also have auxiliary armaments. Um, you don't have a secondary battery um, being on the Marceau. And uh, your AA mount survivability. Well, you have AA um, as the Marceau. Um, it's not necessarily nothing to write home about. And we'll talk more about that as we look at the um, AA defenses here shortly. You don't need to take magazine modification. Uh, what this does is that it reduces the risk of your ship's magazine detonating. Ideally, if you're playing randoms, uh, grand battles, um, ranked, uh, so on and so forth, you take the Juliet Charlie combat signal. And so this completely eliminates the risk of your ship's magazine detonating, and you can get more of these combat signals uh, in the armory. So do yourself a favor and take the main armaments modification one. Uh, for slot two, 
um, we have uh, several options. Uh, these are the two base options. We have damage control system modification one, uh, which just reduces your risk of catching fire and flooding. You take something more like this on a cruiser uh, battleship. And then uh, if I don't, uh, don't take one of these two other options. Um, I always take engine room protection as my standard one um, because it reduces the risk of your engine and steering gears from becoming incapacitated by negative 20%. And then uh, if your engine or steering gear should become knocked out, um, it'd be, uh, the repair time is decreased, so it uh, repairs faster. So in yesterday's video, I actually had this, and then I had uh, gotten coal, and so I actually showed how to purchase the engine boost modification one. It's a special upgrade that you buy in the armory under modifications. And so what this does is that it increases the action time uh, of the engine boost in emergency engine power consumables. For us, it just means the engine boost um, in the Marcel. And so the action time of the consumable is improved by plus 30%. So what you would do is, um, if this uh, if it wasn't equipped, you'd click on this, and basically it would take you into Armory. So I'll go ahead and show you guys where you will find uh, this modification at. So we come down to customizations, and then the first one you have upgrades, we view the category, and then you have engine boost right here uh, for 17,000 coal. Now, if you do have the coupon, uh, it takes 25% off, meaning you only spend, I think it's 12,500 coal. So when you buy these uh, customization upgrades, I always recommend using the coupon, so I won't buy another Q or buy another uh, one of these customization upgrades. Um, until I uh, get the coupons reset uh, next month. Um, so what does that do then? So like I said, the action time of consumable goes plus 30%. And if we hover over our engine boost consumable, uh, you see the action time of the consumable. Right now it says 234 seconds. Originally, before we put this upgrade on, our engine boost uh, action time was 180 seconds. So that means we had three minutes of action time uh, on the engine boost. Now when we add the upgrade, the engine boost upgrade, um, now we're almost looking at four minutes of engine boost, two and 34 seconds. So two and 40 seconds would be four minutes. Um, if you watched yesterday's video, uh, which that video will be in the link of this uh, description, and for those of you who may not be uh, subscribed, you got to see this um, build an action minus um, me having the engine boost modification one, I had engine room protection at the time, and having that uh, longer duration on the engine boost uh, would have actually helped me uh, get around the map even faster. Uh, when you take uh, activate engine boost along with the Sierra mic combat signal, making your ship move even faster, you're pushing 54.9 knots uh, in the Marcel. So you get across the map very quickly. Um, your defensive AA fire modification one, uh, the Marceau does have defensive AA uh, fire consumable. And you can get this modification, which means the action time of the consumable is increased by plus 20 seconds. And your consumable reload time is reduced by negative 10%, meaning that it will come back online even quicker. Um, like I said, the AA is ne nothing necessarily to write home about, um, but for myself, uh, the engine boost is where you get your most money's worth out of the Marceau. It really helps you reposition around the map much quicker. So that is uh, my recommendation. If you don't have the coal, uh, if you don't have engine boost modification one, then I would just simply recommend taking engine room protection. For slot three, uh, you have a few options. You have main battery modification two. Your main battery traverse speed is improved by plus 15%. Um, right now, our main battery traverse speed, if you see 180 degree turn time, is 6.9 seconds. Um, so in that instance, uh, we're pretty good, uh, decent traverse time, so we don't need to take main battery modification two. You also have AA guns modification one. Um, your priority AA sector preparation time is reduced by negative 20%. Um, if you're really wanting to have a AA destroyer, I would argue that there's probably some other destroyers that might do this job a little bit better than the Marcel. Uh, you can see I have taken aiming systems modification one so what this does for the Marcel, in our case, it increases the, uh, the accuracy of the main battery, it accelerates the traverse speed of torpedo tubes, 
Um, so we're basically, that's, those are the two um, bonuses we get out of uh, taking this upgrade. So our maximum dispersion of our main battery shells is reduced by negative 7%. So that means we have even tighter grouping on our shells when we're firing high explosive or armor piercing. Um, and then our torpedo tube traverse speed is plus 20%, meaning we can get our torpedoes on target uh, much faster. And now one of the things I did want to note in talking about the torpedoes on the, the Marceau is that you actually have really good torpedo firing angles um, for the Marceau because you have these uh, two sets of torpedoes in a more forward position and then you have these uh, two here in a more rear center position of the ship. So you have really great uh, torpedo angles um, when it comes to the Marceau, uh, which is really nice. Um, you also have Torpedo Tubes Modification 1. Uh, what this does is that increases torpedo speed by plus 5%, uh, traverse speed of torpedoes improved by plus 20%, and uh, the risk of your torpedo tubes from becoming incapacitated is reduced by negative 40%. Um, again, I believe Marcel leans, she's a hybrid destroyer, but she leans more to a, towards a gunboat destroyer, destroyer in that category. Um, so I recommend investing in the main guns, the uh, main battery of the Marcel. Um, I've known some people, uh, players who have um, invested in maybe a more torpedo build of the Marcel, uh, thinking maybe perhaps more of an assassination build uh, type, what they go for there. But in reality, the, the even some of them said, you know, actually the main batteries were more where you want to uh, invest in. For your fourth slot, I would recommend taking propulsion modification one. So the time taken to reach full engine power when accelerating is negative 50%. Uh, so that is really good. Um, examples of where this benefits you at is, for example, if you're sitting still and you're on a smoke screen or you're just kind of sitting still out open water for some reason, and all of a sudden torpedoes appear, this helps you get out of the way much quicker um, if you're able to avoid them. Um, also, if you're juking uh, incoming fire from an enemy ship, uh, you can play with your throttle and really throw them off. Um, so that helps. Uh, when it comes to steering gears modification one, uh, this reduces your rudder shift time by negative 20%. So right now our rudder shift time is 4.8 seconds. So actually relatively decent. There are some destroyers who um, have a better rudder shift time than the Marcel. Um, but uh, for myself, I have always preferred, uh, preferred propulsion modification one. But if you want to test these two out, uh, if for you as a player, then go for it to see what you like best. Um, and I don't recommend taking damage control system modification too, because that's this is something you take more on a cruiser or battleship. For slot five, I recommend taking concealment system modification one. We already have a concealment expert on our commander, and we also have the permanent camouflage on, which means our concealment uh, is seven kilometers by sea, 3.9 by air, which isn't good. Um, a sure detectability range for any ship is always going to be two kilometers. And then detectability after firing main guns uh, in smoke is 3.4 kilometers. Um, there are other destroyers that do better um, in this category, like the gearing as an example. Um, so yeah, so this is the best concealment you're going to get on the Marcel if you go for a concealment build um, as I have done with the Marcel. Um, Naturally, at tier 10, you're going to have most destroyers are going to um, out-detect you. And we'll talk a little bit more how to combat that when we look at the commander build. Um, but when you have that 7-kilometer detectability range by sea and your speed, you're able to um, approach enemy destroyers uh, much faster and uh, they have a little bit less time to react since you can push that 54.9 knots. Um, you also have the steering gears modification too. Um, your rudder shift time is decreased by negative 40%, and your steering gears repair time is negative 80%. Now, if you wanted to go for an anti-concealed build per se uh, for the Marcel, you could drop, you know, don't take concealment system modification one. Uh, you take this, and then you take uh, steering gears modification one on top of that if you want to, or take propulsion modification. If you're looking to do a bit more open gunboating, because um, you don't get smoke with the Marcel, 
Um, so when you're detected or you're firing your guns, um, you're not going to be able to instantly go dark unless you go dive behind an island or you have a friendly smoke screen um, you can take advantage of. Um, so, but for myself, uh, overall, I would just generally recommend uh, taking Concealment System Modification 1. An anti-conceal build on the Marceau takes a bit more of a higher skill level, I would say, in my opinion. For slot 6, you have four options. You have the main battery modification 3, which you can see that is what we have taken. What this does is that it reduces the reload time of the main battery guns. So our main battery load time is negative 12%. Our main battery traverse speed is negative 13%. So our reload time on our guns is 3.1 seconds. And then as we uh, stated earlier, our traverse speed uh, with that um, nerf per se and taking this uh, upgrade is 6.9 seconds. So it actually traverse speed stock is a little bit faster than what it is right now. Um, but it doesn't bother me because it's only 6.9 seconds um, and you uh, get a 3.1 second uh, main battery reload time. So it works uh, relatively well. You can see the torpedo tubes modification too, which your torpedoes would reload faster. I talked a little bit about already why a torpedo build isn't necessarily optimal on the Marcel. Uh, you do have some players who will take the gunfire control system modification too. What this does, it extends the main battery firing range uh, of your guns. So right now, our main battery firing range is 11.5 kilometers. But I'm going to recommend a commander skill option that will uh, extend your range out already. Um, so that for myself, uh, with the build I like to go with, we can keep our, um, we can get it at shorter reload time on our main battery, um, as that is the route I would recommend. You also have Auxiliary Armaments Modification 2. Um, basically, this is just for AA. This is the only benefit you're going to get out of this. Uh, you continuous AA damage, plus 15%. Damage from shell explosions, plus 15%. And you get two more uh, explosions produced uh, by salvos from AA defenses when the defensive AA fire consumable is active. So let's just take a moment and look at the AA of the Marceau. So when we're, we go through here, um, for myself, I look a little bit more towards continuous damage, damage by shell explosions, priority sector reinforcement, and your firing range. So we can see we have a six kilometer firing range. Our priority sector reinforcement is 35%. Our damage by shell explosions is actually pretty decent. It's uh, 1,680, but our continuous damage is only 182. Um, so there's a bit of a gap here uh, between maybe other ships that you'll see uh, for example, maybe if I look at the gearing, I don't remember what the gearing has, but we'll pull that up. Actually, the continuous damage is a little bit worse, um, and damage by shell explosions is somewhat similar. Do we have another destroyer where Shimakaze is nothing to brag about? <laughs> um, so yeah, so you don't tend to get as high as continuous damage like you would maybe on a cruiser. As an example, I mean, the Wooster is a bit of an exception. The Minotaur has really good continuous um, and damage by shell explosions. So you're not beating out a cruiser when it comes to your continuous damage, and in certain cases, even your damage by shell explosions. Um, so that's why there's other ships that tend to do a better job when it comes to AA, and that's why I don't really suggest it, per se, trying to make a build that invests and gets the most out of uh, AA with a Marceau, even though you have a uh, defensive AA fire. Because most time I'm running around, or uh, thus far in my, I haven't played the Marceau very much up to this point, but I'm very confident in the build I'm uh, sharing with you today, is that I typically run around with AA off um, and only use it when I feel like um, I'll actually be able to utilize it pretty well um, against the enemy player uh, with his planes um so yeah so i think you know then you can kind of see more what the let's see you can see the short range aa medium range aa long range aa so you can see the the medium range aa at 3.5 kilometers is more the sweet spot for continuous AA damage and then you see uh, damage by shell explosions so you can see the hit probability um, number of shell explosions in a salvo where the AA will shine at against an enemy destroyer or enemy destroyer, enemy carrier uh, player 
is if the enemy cl uh, player in the carrier, when he's flying his planes, if he's not good at dodging um, flak, um, the shell explosions, um, you are going to eat him up relatively pretty quick. Um, but exp experienced player um, will have uh, do better um, in avoiding that flak. Um, one of the things you don't tend to have to worry about a enemy aircraft carrier player too much, particularly when it comes to rocket planes, um, because your speed is so fast and your maneuverability is relatively good, that it's much harder for a carrier player to competently land torpedoes, uh, dive bombs, or rocket uh, plane attack on you just because you're so quick and maneuverable. So a lot of carrier players won't necessarily be pursuing you. Also because those carrier players who do know that you also pack defensive AA, which can be a little bit of a um, hindrance factor for them wanting to go after you. Okay, so we've talked uh, pretty much about all these things. So let's go ahead and begin looking at the commander skills. Now one thing I do want to note is as I have a unique commander uh, on the Marcel, I have Charles Henri Honore. I doubt I pronounced that right, but that's what I have. He's one you can purchase uh, from the armory, and he comes with two enhanced skills. I run this commander specifically for my Borgogne, uh, Borgogne uh, where the main battery traverse speed is uh, plus 20%, and then you get this uh, enhanced adrenaline rush. Um, so those are the two um, enhancements he has as a commander, but I'm sharing him between my Borgogne and my Marceau currently. Um, I'd recommend going for the uh, unique legendary commander um, in the armory. Uh, his name is, well, I'll just show you since we're, we're sitting here. If you don't already have him, um, I'm working. He's actually going to be the next commander I most likely buy at this point in time. So we go to commanders and this guy right here. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that last name. But what he has is he's got these talents, right? Um, can be activated multiple times per battle. And each key area that you capture or assisted capture, the chances of setting an enemy on fire with main battery shells increases, and you're gonna be throwing a lot of shells at enemy targets. So this commander fits well with that. You have surge forward. Uh, for every two million HP potential damage, your ship speed is increased by plus 8%. And then you also have rampant um, that each devastating strike that you get, your main battery load time is decreased by negative 5% and your torpedo tube reload time is reduced by negative 5%. So that's really good right there. But also what's really nice is a survivability expert. Um, so right now in a standard commander, uh, you get an HP increase uh, for each ship tier by 350. With this commander, you have the enhanced skill where you get plus 400. So that means I'm gonna have it would have even a larger health pool with the Marcel. Right now, the Marcel has a 25,400 health pool, and then if I take into account this commander, it's gonna go from 25,400 to 25,900 uh, HP. So you get a little bit more there. And if you watched yesterday's video. Um, when I engaged with that Shimakaze uh, at the end, perhaps that may have helped, but there's two other things I said in that battle that actually would have helped me more, and that would have been even having Adrenaline Rush, as I don't have that mastered on the current commander. So as a destroyer, um, or for a captain, uh, you typically have what you will take on 98% of destroyers. Uh, I refer to it as the destroyer bread and butter build. <laughs> So that means you're going to be going for mostly defense. So that is preventive maintenance, last stand, survivability expert, which we were just talking about. You can see here 350 uh, plus HP for each ship tier, and then concealment expert. You'll find that this is typically what you take on 98% of destroyers. Uh, there are a few that lie outside the exception, and those tend to be gunboat destroyers who may already have poor concealment in the first place or going for an anti-concealed build on a destroyer. Um, so let's talk about what these skills do, and then I'll show you the other three skills I intend on mastering and taking once I reach a 21-point commander. 
So right now we have preventive maintenance. Uh, what this does is it reduces the risk of your main turrets, your torpedo tubes, steering gears, and engine from becoming incapacitated. This is really important on destroyers because it reduces the chance by negative 30%. So that's very good. Then as a three-point commander, the last stand, defense skill. The ship remains partially able to sustain speed and maneuverability with the engine and steering gears incapacitated. So basically it means if, for example, your engine gets knocked out, you're not going to be sitting dead in the water with this skill. Um, you are still able to maneuver, but at, at a cost of a penalty. You don't get full, um, like as it says, you get partial uh, sustaining of speed and partial maneuverability. Um, or if your steering gear got knocked out and you don't have this skill, you're not just going to be possibly going around in circles, but you can actually partially uh, still maneuver your steering gears. So definitely want that. And then this is always something you should take uh, as a destroyer player, regardless of what destroyer you're in. You always want to take survivability expert uh, because this means when you're in those gunfight engagements, maybe knife fighting with an enemy destroyer, um, or just in general, uh, having that advantage in your HP pool or health pool means that you're going to be in the battle longer um, and make that game changing difference. There have been plenty of times when I have been in destroyers and I've been less than 500 health and I've made major contributions towards the end of the battle just because I took survivability expert. Concealment expert, um, ship's detectability range is reduced by negative 10%. So with that concealment build I was talking about that I currently have with the Marcel, we have a seven kilometer detectability range by C. So this is what I recommend for 10 points. Uh, for a 21 point commander, um, what are the other three skills I intend to personally take and what are possibly two other options um, you could do in the Marceau? Well, um, typically uh, for my next skill in a destroyer, I would go for Adrenaline Rush. Um, and again, remember this is an enhanced skill. Traditionally on a, a regular commander, you're gonna, your main battery reload time, all these things are going to be minus 0.25% or minus 0.20%. Uh, and then plus 0.20% for the continuous AA damage. Um, but this is traditionally what I always take because um, as you as your health pool decreases, as you take damage, uh, enhances either the ship parameters of your main battery, your torpedo tube reload time, and your continuous AA damage. So this means that, you know, for example, right now, our reload time on our main battery is 3.1 seconds. We could be looking at something more like 2.9 seconds as we lose health. And that, again, that depends upon how much um, health you've lost. But um, so that'd be a 13 point build. But I think what I am intending to take at this point in time is for a 14 point commander, I intend to take radio location. So after you master this skill, the player will have the direction to the nearest enemy ship indicated to them. The enemy player will be alerted that a bearing was taken on their ship, and that's basically you get this center right screen, you get this little located icon. That means someone's radio locating you. And when you master this skill, you can see this uh, arc here. That means it's pointing in the general direction of the closest uh, enemy ship towards you. And as we just discussed, the detectability range on the Marcel for a full conceal build is 7 kilometers. Most destroyers are going to out detect you. So when you have the RPF, uh, is that was kind of what it was called, ref referred to before the 0.10.0 commander we work, um, radio position frequency, something like that. Um, but when you have this, you're able to know what general direction is the closest enemy uh, destroyer towards you. You're, you're being detected, which direction am I being detected from? This skill tells you, and then you're able to get all your guns on that bearing. Now, if you again, if you watched yesterday's video, that link will be in the description. Um, you could see that there are some instances where I I fought two Shimakazes, and they have the best concealment in the game at tier 10. And one was uh, back behind our cap in our spawn area, and I really couldn't sacrifice going hunting for him because I didn't know what general location he would be, and I had teammates who needed me more in the center cap um, to help contest against the points as our opposing flank. Uh, uh, opposite flank uh, completely fell apart. Um, so this skill would really help um, in those situations and help me have a leg up on the enemy destroyer even though he's out detecting me. Um, I'd know where he's going to be at. So this is why I intend to take for a 14 point commander and then as a 17 point commander then I'll take Adrenaline Rush next. 
um, and we'd already discussed this skill. After that, uh, this means I have four points left. So what do I intend to take? Um, I am intending to take the main battery and AA expert. Um, the main battery firing range before taking this skill is 11.5 kilometers. Now you're going to find in certain circumstances, this is going to be a bit lacking. Um, you're going to wish that it was just a little bit further, uh, reached a little bit further away. Um, and so when we take this, we go to 13.8 kilometers. Um, one of the reasons why I like extending the main battery firing range is, um, you know, you're not, you don't have a smoke screen, but what we do have is we have a lot of speed as a French destroyer, especially with our engine boost. And when we're going 54.9 knots, if you're going in a straight line, um, when you're open gunboating, let's say an enemy cruiser, enemy battleship, it's much harder for them to land shots on you. And what makes it difficult for an enemy battleship cruiser to land shots at you is if you're doing an open gunboating engagement uh, at range. So that means we're not six kilometers from uh, a Georgia or an Iowa shooting him because he's most likely going to be able to hit us because we're super close. This means if we're open gunboating at, let's say, 12, 13 kilometers away, booking along over 50 knots, it's going to be really hard for an enemy battleship or cruiser to effectively land shots on us. And we just get to be cancer, harass them, raining down HE shells on that target. So that's the benefit of this skill, uh, and it's one that I would recommend in taking. The secondary benefit is the damage from AA shell explosions is increased by plus 15%. So if I open this up, you can see we get plus 252. So now we're at 1,932 damage by shell explosions. So you do end up uh, in this build that I'm suggesting, you do end up getting uh, a skill that also further enhances your AA. So without it, you can see 1680 with this 1,932. So definitely uh, a carrier player does not want to accidentally fly into one of your flat clouds, right? They, they're gonna be wanting to avoid those shell explosions. And so with this amount of damage at tier 10, um, especially with defensive AA fire and gauge, which only boost uh, these, you're gonna be doing a lot more effective damage um, with AA. So. This is what build I intend to take. This is what I would recommend uh, uh, in general. Now, granted, this is just my opinion. This is just my recommendation. Here, feel free to disagree, agree, uh, take a different build. So let's talk about this uh, two other build options. Um, one has a minor variation to it uh, that I could see taking with the Marcel. So let's say, as an example, you want to get your main battery you really want to focus on that. You want to get your reload time down even shorter than the 3.1 seconds that we have right now. Then I would recommend dropping main battery and AA experts and picking up main battery and AA specialist. So our continuous AA damage goes up, but we get that main battery reload time decreased by negative 5%. So you can see the changes and our main battery reload time drops to 2.9 seconds. And then you pair this with adrenaline rush, uh, you're and you lose some. Uh, if you lose some health, then you're looking at maybe even something more of a 2.8, 2.7 second reload time on your main battery. So you're even uh, a little bit more deadly there. Uh, granted, this means that your main battery firing range would be 11.5 kilometers, but um, yeah, you could if you wanted to. You could give up main battery modification three if you want to reach out to the 16%, but the point is getting your main battery reload time down. Uh, so then you don't actually really want to give up this skill in that instance uh, for the example that I'm giving uh, and running uh, this type of build. Um, if you don't want RPF, if you feel more comfortable without it, and let's say, well, let me back up. So this is what I'm showing you right now, as we've been discussing. And then uh, with the one point left, I would say incoming fire alert, just a warning about a salvo fired at your ship from a distance of more than 4.5 kilometers. So for example, if you're detected, you'll see it switch to like red exclamation point and it'll say incoming fire or something like that, or just incoming. Uh, so this would be an alternate option I'd recommend taking. If you really are fine uh, without, um, 
let's say going, let's say you want to do an anti-concealment build with the Marcel. So let's say you gave up concealment expert, uh, which means uh, you're going to lose that 10%. So then maybe, what does that take you up to like something like, uh, I'm not sure, 7.8 without concealment expert, possibly. Um, what you could do if you want the range, you still take main battery AA expert, so you get your range out to 13.8. But instead of taking concealment expert, you take fearless brawler. What this does is it also, you get the bonus of an additional shell explosion in your AA salvo, but the can be activated is it reduces the main battery load time after your ship has been detected by the enemy. So if you're um, open gunboating, so we don't have consumer expert, but we do have the main battery AA expert, um, your reload time, um, let's see, right now is the 2.9 seconds but the can be activated, you take 10% off. All of a sudden, now you're almost to 2.6 second reload, uh, 2.61, because you take 2.9 minus 0 0.29, so that's basically the 0 0.3, and it's like 0 0.6, uh, or 2.61 second reload. If I'm saying that right. Math was never my strongest uh, suit, so I'm just going to just verify that with my fancy calculator. Yeah, 2.61 seconds, so 2.61 seconds um, on your reload time. And then you pair that with Adrenaline Rush. Um, well, standard, yeah, pair it with Adrenaline Rush. Then your reload time can be something like 2.5 seconds, or maybe even 2.4 seconds, right? And then your main battery firing range, because you're taking this skill, is going to be that 13.8, I believe it was. Yeah, 13.8, and then you take Fearless Brawler. Um, but you give up um, concealment, and you give up radio location. Um, so I know players who run this type of build. Um, so then you'd still have a one point available, and I would say incoming fire alert. So you'd have... These three, then you jump over to Fearless Brawler, uh, Main Battery AA Experts, Main Battery and AA Specialist, and an Adrenaline Rush, um, along with the incoming fire alerts. So you're uh, definitely a much more of a threat, but an enemy destroyer is going to come uh, see you uh, coming more at a distance. And so I'll talk about that in just a moment. So again, the build I uh, recommend taking is this, this is what I plan to take because this fits my personal play style a bit more. Um, and that is, um, I'm gonna to get to that in just a moment. So this is first build option. Second build option would be something like this. Third build option would be giving up uh, concealment, giving up radio location, and then fearless sprawler. Those are the three options. Okay, now what I keep wanting to say, the reason why I go for uh, I go for this build here is because as a destroyer, there's there's three main objectives as a destroyer that you play as. One is spotting. Uh, two is playing the objectives, so that means capture points, contesting caps, and uh, the third is screening. A screening as in if there's enemy destroyer uh, in the distance and there's some, let's say, uh, cruisers, battleships behind you, uh, you're screening torpedoes. So then it kind of gives your uh, battleship cruiser player friendly a heads up, hey, there's torpedoes on the way. So those are the, the three main um, things in my mind as a destroyer player. It's uh, scouting slash spotting. It's con uh, playing the objective, so capture points, uh, taking capture points, contesting them. It's screening. Uh, detecting enemy torpedoes inbound on possible cruisers battleships so you got to be mindful if there is a cruiser battleship behind you and you're in between that and in a possible enemy destroyer area then you should be mindful that there could be torpedoes coming in but then the fourth one that I think is really important um, that I like to add on is as a destroyer player my main goal is to take out the opposing enemy destroyer and this build helps me do that. 
And I say that because um, of the RPF and the concealment. So in getting my concealment down to seven kilometers, having radio location um, to know where that closest enemy destroyer is, I get to take out the opposing enemy destroyer. Now my uh, friendlies don't have to worry about torpedoes. Uh, if that destroyer does have uh, torpedoes uh, coming in their general direction, I don't have to worry about um, continually having to fight an opposing destroyer, uh, contesting the objectives, uh, flipping caps back and forth constantly. Like you saw in yesterday's video, um, I had, was up against two Shimakazes. I would flip a cap, one of them would flip uh, the one I had taken, I'd go flip the other one. The, then it was just kind of like merry-go-round per se. So having the RPF helps me know where that enemy destroyer is and being able to move in on that position when I'm detected and take him out. Again, like that Shimakaze player who was behind um, back in the spawn, harassing two of the battleships uh, behind us while I was still contesting the cap uh, with the Fletcher and then also dealing with a uh, Hanover and Grand Battles. Um, I took both of them out and then having the RPF to help me easily find where that enemy Shimakaze was uh, along with engine boost to get there in time, a longer duration, would have been a uh, definite benefit in helping uh, me out there. But there's only so much I could have done in that battle. So this is why I suggest taking a concealed build, why I suggest taking a radio location uh, for the Marcel. It's because of that fourth objective, that fourth thing I'm saying in my mind, where you, you're, you're, scouting, you're scouting, you're spotting, you are playing the objective of capture points, contesting capture points. You're screening, locating enemy torpedoes coming in towards cruisers, battleship players behind you, and then taking out the enemy destroyers. I play my destroyers in that way, and for me, that tends to be the most effective in helping uh, my team win battles. Because when you take out the enemy destroyers, it opens up a lot of possibilities uh, for your friendly battleships. It allows them to push in, allows your cruisers to push in because they're not... Uh, having to worry about torpedoes, um, your cruisers aren't going to be as easily spotted because you took away the enemy's spotting and it frees up the caps so you can play for those. So that's why I suggest this build. So again, this is the number one build I'd recommend. If you want to do a different one, you can go this route. And then the other option, as I shared, was giving up concealment and then taking Fearless Brawler to get your, uh, if you really want a even faster, quicker reload, while still retaining you're at that 13.8 kilometer main battery firing range. So I'm gonna stop there. Uh, I hope you appreciated this video as we discussed the Marceau. Uh, I really enjoy playing the Marceau thus far. I haven't played too many battles in her, um, but I did do some research. Um, before I do these types of videos, I see um, what other World of Worship content creators, what are they suggesting to take on certain ships? Uh, like I looked at Euro, I looked at Notzer, um, their videos are before the commander rework of 0.10.0. This video I'm doing for you today is as of update 0.10.5. So if you have any questions or thoughts or what type of build you're going to take, please drop those beneath in the comments. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. And if you enjoy the content and you're not subscribed, uh, I encourage you to consider subscribing as I try to do these types of videos once every Saturday. Then we have some different content throughout the week. Uh, and then if you already subscribed, uh, I always appreciate it as we continue to grow the community here with you. So until next time, take care.